the marinade. There's no O in marinade. Let's try it one more time. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> the marinade. <laughs> marrow. Marrow. Marinade. Bone, bone marinade. The marinade. The marinade. With Jason Earl. The devil walked in, blame it on him. He's a counterfeit lover that won't tell me where he's been. Still one leg. Welcome to The Marinade with Jason Earl, a free-flowing conversation about the creative process with creative people. This is a bonus episode, and our guest for the second time is Hannah Harbour. Now, this is second uh, Hannah's second appearance on the show, as I mentioned. Um, you don't have to listen to the other one to, to understand this one, but we do kind of make some references to what was happening in the, the first episode a couple years ago. It's been almost two years since I first recorded with Hannah. So I do recommend going back and listening to that regardless. Um, It may be helpful before you listen to this one, but um, it's not necessary by any means. Uh, Hannah is such a delight. All of my guests are wonderful and I'm so lucky to have them. But man, it would be cool if I could just have like Hannah as my full-time co-host. She is always funny and thoughtful and engaging. Just everything you want in a conversation partner. Um, this was recorded at the end of February. Okay. So life was very normal. I'm, I'm releasing this in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis, but, um, in Florida, at least in February, uh, there was no concept of a COVID-19 crisis, uh, as we now know it. I was serving as MC for the rock and Robinson festival in Orlando, Florida's milk district. And we sat out, sat down with three uh, artists that day. We sat down outside of the Nook on Robinson. They were gracious enough. They're one of my favorite little local bars and kind of almost like a little community meeting place. They, they celebrate local art in a major way. And um, the owners, uh, Matt, Danny, and Mary are all wonderful uh, creative folks who are very supportive of art, especially here in Orlando. And um, they were gracious enough to let me have a little table out in front because there was a music festival going on and it was uh, difficult to find a place to record. So you do hear some some music in the background, but I, I don't think it's terribly distracting. And then there's some folks who might have been enjoying themselves who walk by. But again, I don't think it takes away too much. Just as a heads up, that's where we were. And I want to, again, give the, a shout out to the Nook because um, they're just wonderful folks. And um, if you're in Orlando or if you live here, make sure you, you check them out and support them as much as possible. I know they're selling some t-shirts online. So if you want to support a local business here, um, that's one way to do it. Uh, that is day was wonderful. It was an absolutely beautiful day and the music was incredible. And I served as MC on the main stage. Well, um, in between introducing bands and making announcements, I sat down with Hannah, which you're about to hear our good friend, Kevin Maines of the vaults. And then my friends, Philly and James who have a project called asleep in planes. Well, unfortunately I was experimenting with a new recording technique that day. And, um, I managed to tape over the other two conversations. Um, I now have got that figured out and I, I know how to do it without being an idiot, but uh, I'm so sorry that you don't get to hear my conversation with Kev, which was wonderful. And you don't get to hear my conversation with Philly uh, and James from asleep, asleep in planes. So here's what I'd like for you to do. Um, it'd be awesome if you would first, Go listen to the first two singles or the last two singles, the most recent singles from Asleep in Planes um, and give them a follow on social media. Their latest songs are Universe and Little Lies. And um, I think that that's their best work, in my opinion. I like everything they've done, but the they keep getting better. And it's really cool to see them grow because they're really interesting guys and, and um, they're they're doing something that I think sounds a little bit different and is is. Uh, both really listenable, but also very, um, very creative. 
uh, and they're just good folks. So check them out. They're working on a full length album and we will have them on for a proper episode whenever that is released. And then second, follow the Volts, Kevin Maines' wonderful band on social media and listen to their music. I can't say enough about Kev and the Volts. Um, if you're a guitar player, check out Kevin's company, Carmadon Electronics. He makes uh, guitar pedals. So if you're a guitar player, check out what he has to do. We actually talked about that during the conversation that I taped over. So I'm so sorry that I did that, and we will um, get Kev on the show as soon as possible. He's also been on the show before in our year-end series, and we talked about the Wood Brothers. So check that out as well if you want to get to know Kev a little bit better. He's a dear, dear friend and um, a great, great guitar player and songwriter and singer. Of course, all of that to be to say, here comes my conversation with Hannah Harbor, hannahharbor.com. Um, you can get physical copies of her album long time coming, which was released in early 2019. And I can't recommend it enough. She and her band, the Lionhearts went on that day to play this just incredible set at rock and Robinson. And they are always so wonderful. Down live. Came down, down my street. He don't stumble and he don't run. He just walks so steady. And he's headed straight for me There's a slow lead and I'm losing time I'm playing hide and seek with my pride And when down from the devil in love collide There's a slow lead and I'm losing time I'm playing hide and seek You can find all things The Marinade at marinadepodcast.com Follow us on social media, at Marinade Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. We're also over on Facebook. We love, love, love interacting with fans and friends of the show on social media. We also have some really cool things coming up, y'all. And so that's a good way to keep up with what we're doing. Obviously, we have not been able to record face-to-face. This was recorded at the end of February. And then I just released the conversation with Matt Woods and Eden Archer, which were both recorded in March. Um, But that's it. Uh, Everything else is going to have to be by phone for the uh, foreseeable future. That's the bad news. The good news is um, just have we've had an outpouring of amazing artists that we've gotten a chance to talk with. I have conversations recorded right now with the great Daryl Scott, Brian Fallon, the band Rookie, two guys from the band Rookie and Michael McDermott. All four of those conversations are recorded and ready and, and ready to, to come your way. So I'll get those out to you as soon as possible. I mean, even as I'm saying that and, and thinking about it, I'm completely blown away by how fortunate we are to have those opportunities. And I'm working on some other projects as well. If you really like what we're doing, please consider joining our Patreon community for just a few bucks a month. You can gain access to our exclusive show, Jason's Journey. Uh, that is a show where I talk about the moments that shape my creative life. Uh, Today, I released uh, the second hour of my conversation with Matt Woods, who was our guest for episode 57 over on Patreon. Um, You know, Matt and I just ended up talking for another hour uh, past where we we meant to. And so it's kind of a fly on the wall sort of thing because we were talking about podcasting, but I think it's a really fun listen and um, it's available to our Patreon patrons. So there's all kinds of stuff we try to do to interact a little bit more deeply Uh, with the show and some of the themes that we talk about on the show so if you can swing it that would be awesome if not i'll keep uh, putting out these feature episodes and bonus episodes and and doing it um, as much as i possibly can especially now when folks are needing a little bit of light and are um are are holed up in their homes Uh, everybody please stay safe please continue to stay home and stay safe you're amazing everyone my conversation with hannah harper My friend.
Now it's saying I'm not full. Now it's saying I'm good. Hello? Did we trick it? I don't know. Let's try to trick it. Okay. Maybe we're recording over Kevin. If we are, that's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Kevin. What are the, <laughs> <laughs> what are the things... Um, so I don't know if we caught this or not because yeah. I'm a dumb dumb. <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure. If there we was got a dirty word um, for those of you listening. Well, you have childrens, <laughs> and I'm sure you say dumb dumb occasionally. Yes. Um, yeah, let's just roll with this. We might be good. Okay, so the um, you were talking whether we got this on mic or not. You were talking <laughs> about. Uh, that now you're at a place where you feel like you can say things that before you you did you feel like you couldn't say them before or you weren't no I just ready? don't think that I had really embraced the fact that who you think you've always been is not necessarily who you are okay and I I'm not saying it takes motherhood to get there but it was kind of that right for me this second go around all over again you know the first time it's a lot of flailing and a lot of anxiety at least in my boat um, and then the second yeah. go around it's like oh okay I've been here before but there's a stillness involved in this. As far as our pace, what we're used to in our creative life. Yeah. Um, and in that stillness, it was like, you know, looking yourself in the mirror again for the first time in a long time. Right. Um, Are there anything process wise that you're so at, at the time we talked about the artist's way last yeah, time? Yeah. Yeah. Have you been keeping up with morning pages? Not at all. Really? Not at all. And I feel really OK about it. I, yeah. I know I'll go back to it at some point yeah. um, just because it was so good for me. But no, not at all. I, I don't really have. I was also, I remember, pretty rigorous about, like, not being on my phone before noon and, like, yeah. you know, all those kinds of things that I needed that kind of structure at that time. Um, now, I pretty much am at the point where I forgive myself for not doing the dishes if I feel like there's a song to write. That's kind of oh, where I am now. That's great. Um, because I can finally accept that that is just as beneficial as a clean kitchen. I'm wondering about that in my own life. Just and we just happened to have a conversation about dishes this morning. Really, actually, yeah. really. And I'm in my head about it, you know, because like I don't know. It's not a, and I don't want to phrase this the wrong way because it's not a who's right or who's wrong kind of situation. And we weren't. It wasn't a fight. Yeah. Um. It was like a, you know, she needed to express to me she was feeling something about specifically dishes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I wasn't in the headspace to be as supportive of a partner as I probably should have. Now, she may say something different, and I'm excited to get to talk to her about it tomorrow when yeah. I finally get to see her again. But I've been in my head all day about it. Yeah. And it has stifled me creatively through this day. Um, although, you know, I know how to put that stuff aside and do the work and yeah. do what I need to do. But I have to admit that those things, that's awesome that you're feeling that, that you, you're feeling like, okay, I it's just as valuable for me to do that creative work as it is for me to have that clean kitchen or whatever it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think because, and I don't know if you do this to yourself, but I used to attach my worth on how well I kept the kitchen clean. You oh, know what I mean? Like it wasn't, it wasn't just that I, cause I love to have clean things, but I've been the messiest little person my Good whole life. Oh, I mean, your whole life. Oh, my whole life. Oh. And so, but I never knew that it, that was a block of some kind or that that was just like a manifestation of my mess in my mind, you know, in yeah. some ways. Um, and so now to accept, like I can accept whatever is going on in my mind in the same way that I can accept whatever's going on in the kitchen. I love a clean kitchen, yeah. but if it's going to be healing for me or some sort, if it's going to be whatever, you know, you want to attach to it for me to write the song in that moment, probably better for me to choose that thing in that moment than like go, oh, but I should be doing this other thing because it makes me more valuable. Right. You know? Yeah. And I don't know if that clicks with like everyone or like every mom or even inside of my womanhood. I don't know, but it definitely, for me, I know that that was where the line was. If I didn't clean the kitchen and I went to bed, did I really accomplish all that day that I could have? That's so interesting. I'm glad you've let go of that, or yeah. at least you let go of it at the moment. Yeah. Is that, so do you have a whole nother record written or what's going on? So I've got a solid bunch of songs from okay. this bit of time. Do I know if they're cohesive enough to call them a record? I don't know. Oh, interesting. Um, and I also don't know sonically, you know, there was a, there was a time when I was writing for the Lionhearts where I just wanted to write rock and roll songs. Yeah. Like, and I went into it with that like mentality 
And now, if I let myself not do the dishes and I let myself chase the song of that moment, I don't care what that song sounds like. I'm, I'm getting something. Yep. And so some of these now are kind of back to maybe just an acoustic bear, whatever. However, I've brought songs like that to the band before and they've turned them into really beautiful rock and roll songs. Yeah, so well, you've got a we'll rock see and where roll they go, band. You know? That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. I was going to ask you that is that you have this incredible rock and roll band Thanks. behind you, you know? And so, I, yeah, do, are you, that process, like it sounds like you don't have to worry about whether it's a Hannah yeah. uh, acoustic song or right. whatever, or it's a rock and roll song, because if it needs to be a rock and roll song, your collaborative partners will help you get yeah. there. Yeah, and the song will tell us. You know? Yeah. It won't feel done until you go, oh man, that, that groove or that whatever, you know? Is there anything thematically that you're writing about at the moment? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I, oh, I don't, I did not want to say this, but I do think like the acceptance of femininity of sorts, um, is happening for me okay. in the way that I never wanted to be called a female fronted band because you're like drawing attention to the thing that you're trying to just make homogenous. Sure. However, uh, I think I'm finally willing to like put my feet down and go like, I am I am the female lead and songwriter of yeah. a band and there are things that I deal with and go through because of that or right. even my place in the world if I was not in a band and I wrote poetry I would hope that I could get to a point where I was able to just tell my experience without some agenda and I think right. that's where I am now like I don't need to say I'm the female lead of a band because hoorah but right. it is my identity right. and it is or and at it, least it's the story that I'm telling with my life right now. It informs your experience, too. Yes. And you're going to write about those experiences. Right. Because you said something interesting that, especially as a dude, I'm and a dude who does journalism around music. Yeah. And is trying to navigate those waters and be an ally and an advocate as much as I can. Yeah. And learning every day and probably fucking it up a lot. Of but, course, we all are, though. You know? We all are. Yeah. Because that's the question I had was you said, you said uh, the, the word you used was homogenous. And that's the question I'm trying to navigate is the idea of like some of my favorite songwriters are women who write about a very feminine experience. Mm -hmm. And it is different yeah. from the way that my favorite male songwriters write. Right. And in some cases, it's better. And in some cases, it's similar. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so navigating that water is really difficult. Is, is, is meh, Difficult might not be the right word. But I, I do think I try to take care as I'm commenting on these things and as I'm asking questions to respect the fact that, that there needs to be an equal place at the table, but... What you write may sound very different from what Travis Meadows writes. Right, right. And what it sounds like and yeah. what it looks like and what's expected of me as the person walking in the room. You know, yeah. like even today, and I'm not going to say where. Okay. But even today, um, as yeah. I was getting a credential, it was um, said to me in a way of who are you here with? not what band are you in and it was like a wow. okay you know and it's fine i'm not looking for reasons to be upset but oh that's icky though because you're still, near it's the icky. top of the it's bill icky. well but like and that doesn't matter so much as it's like man there were six dudes ahead of me that that's not how that was asked yeah. you know was but, there a specific language that just i mean because this because I, I do wonder about if that person was, oh that person and I, like that person totally did not mean it in that way right. but sometimes like you said we all fuck it up because we don't even realize the ways that we might turn a phrase differently or even think to ask a question to a certain person that we would not even second guess needing to ask the person before them right you know? um was it a tone or was it like specific words it was it was the tone because it, it was a backstage situation so it was like who okay. are you who are you here with yeah, it was like, yeah, well, yeah. I, I this is my gear and i have a band? I don't. Were you ca you were carrying yeah, your gear? Yeah, like you know, like I don't. Why uh, don't I? Um, Be like a like a road. I'm here with me. I don't. <laughs> me myself and I. I don't know. What's the answer? Y'all uh, who haven't, who aren't yeah. looking at Hannah right now, yeah. she isn't the stereotype of a roadie exactly. <laughs> I don't know how to phrase that. Is that insensitive? I'm no. I'm not wearing all black. <laughs> That's what we mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
That's what we mean by that. That's all. That's all we mean. That's, That's great. great. Oh. <laughs> we should do this once a week. Yeah, we should. <laughs> uh, I do feel like I love this microphone, and we could we could really do it. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> and yeah, we yeah, if we had time. I think that's the other thing with your time. So you're you're maximizing that time. Yeah. Do you is it a specific time each day that you know you're gonna have? Um, as I paranoidly look at my recorder okay. seven hundred times. Is there a um, we can get to anxiety if we have time. Is there a um, specific time during the day that you're carving out? Like, is that an intentional thing? Or is it just like, the baby's going to take a nap, so I got to go right yeah, now? Yeah, we're still really in that early stage of scheduling for him. Um, the good thing is he sleeps way better than his big brother ever did at this age. So oh, he good. sleeps like at night. He's I, got, I get a good chunk of time right before I want to go to bed. Wow. Um, and that's pretty backwards from what I would have wanted. I would prefer to wake up and write. Me but it's just too. not my life right now. Yeah. So um, I'll spend all day long kind of beating my head against the wall of, okay, what might this melody sound like once I get a guitar in my hands? What is the phrase that I was really honing in on? And then I'll sit down with it. Um, but what I've also made myself do, and I don't know if you've done this as a writer, uh -huh. I have a lot of notebooks that have all kinds of stuff in them. Uh -huh. And I previously would go back and open one of them and be like, okay, let's start here with this oh, thing huh. and try to finish it. Uh -huh. I went to Target and got a bunch of blank ones uh -huh. and I don't let myself open the old ones anymore. I only start from the blank ones because whatever's in that moment, I need to get done in that moment. Now, if I get stuck and there are phrases of previous things within the same train of thought that I've written down before and I can go fish from, uh -huh. great. But like, I don't want to piecemeal songs from things I was thinking about two years ago yeah. to write songs now. Yeah. I, yes. So I never look back. Um, I, I wish I, I've never been able to do that. I never do. Um, unless it's like um, I have a song that I don't play it all the time, but usually if I'm playing an open mic or whatever, I'll play this one. It's my go-to yeah. because it's a song that started in 2000. Eight, nine, two thousand nine, and I didn't finish until a year and a half ago. You know, yeah. Because I knew I had a good idea, right? And I had no idea where it was going, so I went back to that specific notebook. It is very rare I do that. Yeah. Usually they just I've got on my windowsill. I have one hundred and fifty notebooks or whatever. You know, just sitting there. Yeah. And when I'm done, it's like that's a document that I almost am like, I almost don't want to mess with it. Yeah. I almost feel like. Now, here's what I did the other day. I went back and listened, or I mean, listened, read a notebook from when I was in law school in 2007 or eight. Wow. And I just, I don't know why. I yeah. found it somewhere else that it wasn't supposed to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I opened it and I read it. And it's so interesting how similar my thoughts were then to now, but the themes are all different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I didn't have a mortgage and right. a, you know, right. a partner that the I lived with. The rhythm's the same, but right. the other, yeah. Right. Yeah. It was like I, my, my worldview was very similar. Yeah. And I think of myself as so different now, but the core was still there. Yeah. That's beautiful, actually. I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is good. I think I found one recently, and this is one that I did go back to and I'm trying to finish now, but Thomas and I were in Nashville, I don't know, before kids. Right. And... Um, I just got this like kind of line in my head of money moved in on the east side of town mm. and like started writing a thing about it. And then I put it away because like we left Nashville, I didn't think about it again. Yeah. That melody didn't really stick with me at the time, whatever. Like I now live in a part of town north of Orlando, but the east side of Orlando that is kind of blossoming and there are real growing pains with that as well. Mm -hmm. Beautiful sure. pains. Um, and so the other day when I was flipping through and I saw the money moved in on the east side of town and I was like, dude, I wrote this about somewhere else years ago. Yeah. Didn't finish it. But now this little snippet is applying to what I'm doing here. So maybe it was just I had it and then it was gone. And now maybe it's going to come back to me about my situation now. But um, I don't know. I, writing songs is so fun. Writing anything is so fun. So fun. I feel so good when I do it. Yeah. If I do it regularly and now tying that back to anxiety if I'm doing it regularly I'm at my happiest when I'm creating all the time like yeah. I, as I was listening to our conversation from 2018 um, 
I, I could hear how happy I was. Yeah. You know, we had just bought our house. Yep. Just bought our house. I hadn't even set up the studio yet. We, we recorded in the living in room. In the living room, yeah. Right? Yep. Um, and I'm so content in that moment. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I was cranking out a podcast episode a week, and I was writing constantly. Yeah. Um, I just poetry and songs and yeah. short stories and well everything. and like your partner was in the next room painting you know like it was yes, all like that you know yes. it just it was very cool and I think that that's still the case yeah I mean she has her art show coming up very soon um, by the time this comes out no I guess yeah it'll still be a week from the time this comes out so um, she's constant like her art has spilled over into the kitchen again like we bought the house so it wouldn't have <laughs> yeah. to be on the kitchen fucking table yeah. <laughs> and now there's paintings and there's yeah. a drill I took a picture the other day it's like a seltzer water a drill <laughs> a, a piece of wood yeah a uh, paint paint brushes you know and it's I was like I don't know what I'm gonna eat exactly but I'm gonna <laughs> but I'm like what are you supposed to say like because right. because again when that moment strikes she's got to do it yeah right and and when the moment strikes for you, you got to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think now it's hard sometimes to get that perspective on, I guess I am creating quite a bit right now. And I am pretty damn happy. Right. You know? Yeah. And celebrating it in the moment sometimes is much more difficult than looking back on it and hearing my voice back when yeah. you and I talked and going, wow, I was in a good place. Yeah. I think I've also learned with this baby, like, I don't feel, and this just hear me out. Yeah. I don't feel overly thrilled anymore or overly sad anymore or oh, like I just I've had moments where I'm driving in the car and I go I'm just content like I don't have this swing from one to the other or like these things that I'm just so looking forward to that just like get through it until you get to that thing and I think that means I feel peaceful that's great <laughs> you know but I don't know that I ever let myself live there before mm, you yeah, know yeah yeah um do you think you felt pressure to be like overly passionate or you i know? think i felt pressure to prove that this was a worthwhile career choice oh interesting and not from any specific person my family's great like i don't want anybody to hear that and be like what but yeah, it yeah. really and maybe i just did it to myself but, no, but i think and i think a lot of people feel that right yeah for sure i think that's a societal thing yeah. as much as anything else yeah and i think what really smacked me in the face about it was like oh you're a mom now yeah. like you're responsible for someone else yeah. like come on but yeah no i'm over that for sure but i know that that played into my anxieties no doubt about it like what other people might think all the time and that's where my ego came in. I don't care what people think, but I'm so consumed by what people might think. Or I'm so consumed by what I might have to say. Am I saying all of it in the right way? Or, yeah. you know. Well, you said last time about how you judge your ego. Yeah. That was one of the things we talked yeah. about last time. Yeah. So what's that relationship like right now? I really feel okay. Yeah. I Like, I, I think that probably played into my emotionalism as well, was just like trying to figure out like how I saw myself. Right. You know? Yeah. And no, I, that makes I really, sense. I feel okay. Good. <laughs> Good. That's so wonderful to hear. Um, I'm really excited to hear some new tunes. Are you going to, do you have any new ones? That I you do. To I'm going to play some, um, I'm going to do a little snippet in the middle of just me for a second. And then the band will come back. Oh, fine. Um, so I'm going to play the ones that are brand new. Is any of that recorded anywhere? No, not mm -hmm. yet. Not yet. Like no. a little demo or something or anything? Nothing. Well, I mean, I've got like the voice memos and sure. little videos on my phone of things. Do you do a lot of that? Voice memos and... Voice memos, totally. Really? I can't do anything on my phone right now because I have so many voice memos. Interesting. So we all have a problem with the card being full. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Makes yeah. me feel better. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few... I don't have very many voice memos. I um, I can't believe I'm saying this and I may, I may cut it, but let's just say it anyway. <laughs> Okay. The other day, I, <laughs> I came. I walked down here. We live about. Well, you've been to my house. We, for folks listening, we're, we've we've been. We live about a mile, almost two miles from here. Yeah. So I love walking down here. It's just right. You yeah. Know, it's a nice little two mile walk. I can have a beer. I know I have a two mile walk back, so I won't drink too many beers. Yeah. Which is perfect. <laughs> um, and I went and I had a couple of beers, and then I walked home. And for some reason. And this doesn't happen very often, but occasionally it'll happen. I felt inspired to rap. And so I took out Yes. <laughs> I took out my phone. And I have this like how do I describe it? This voice memo of like this uh, protest song that's a rap <laughs> about fascism. There you go. <laughs> and it's awful, Hannah. <laughs> it is 
uh, I would tell you if it was good. I'd probably play the damn thing right now on mic if I thought it was any good. It is bad. That's great. But I'm glad I have it. And then uh, I did have this other. Uh, Chris and I the other day got our uh, our instruments out. I got my guitar and she had her ukulele out. And she is gonna be on. She was on my show. So I'm gonna release that tomorrow. Awesome. I know. I can't wait. And and the music I'm gonna use is this us just like an impromptu jam session where we're playing. Chris Isaac's Wicked Game. Oh, I love that song. So good. You should hear her sing it. I love that oh song. Oh, my God. I, is she going to be... So it's going to be on the episode. Yeah. I'm going to listen to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's... Um, it, it, that When I was doing that, then I found this other voice memo that's this lyric that says, I'm like a puppy when it rains, and you get me off my routine. And, uh, and then I say... And then it's, I won't be the one to blame for all these terrible things I'm known to say and do. And I can't find the melody because it doesn't sound right when I listen to it. But the, I love that lyric. Yeah, I'm so yeah. happy with that with that lyric, but I don't know where it goes. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're going to wake up in the middle of the night and there it's going to be. I know. I know. No, it will. It'll come. Or your next um, slightly inebriated yeah. walk home. It's going to end up a <laughs> hip-hop song. <laughs> right, really bad right, hip-hop song. Right. <sighs> I uh, like it. <laughs> well, we are almost out of time. And Hannah, I'm just so grateful for Me too. this time. Every Me time too. we get to spend together, I'm... I'm so grateful for your time and I can't wait for your set. I can't wait to introduce you on the yeah, main stage. I know, I know. Are you going to rap fun. a little? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to just play that recording. <laughs> <laughs> this next band makes me feel this. It's my goal, really. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. It's the great divide.